morning, and uh, thanks for having me. So I'm going to talk about a convergent uh, fast electron source from laser plasma interaction. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank um, collaborators, uh, Epoch Collaboration, and my various people in my institute at the Rutherford Appleton Laboratory, and various computing clusters. So um, this work is related to inertial confinement fusion. Um, so most of you are probably familiar with central hotspot ignition, which is the, uh, the main route that the National Ignition Facility and Laser Megajoule uh, investigates. So you know, it's a $4 billion facilities. So you take a small spherical capsule like this with a 70 micron thickness layer of frozen deuterium and tritium, and a small amount of DT vapor at the center. And um, basically you spherically illuminate that shell either using lasers directly, which is the direct drive approach, or you convert that laser light to x-rays in the, uh, or I should say, indirect drive approach. That's the whole ROM approach. But basically, you're trying to create a situation somewhat like this. So the, the, uh, the, the lasers or x-rays that, that heats up the outer surface of your capsule, um, causing a phase change and expansion, which then compresses the, the shell inwards um, and the, the volume decreases, and you have this region in the center, which is at lower density, and the pressure in that region increases, which decelerates this high-density shell, turning the shell's kinetic energy into an internal energy in the hotspot. And if you can create high enough ion temperatures, then you start to have DT fusion, you have alpha particles created, and the key is that these alpha particles created in this region have to then redeposit their energy in that region, which causes um, bootstrap ignition and burn, hopefully. Um, the disadvantages of the, head, the central hotspot um, ICS scheme, principally that you have to invest an awful lot of energy in creating this dense uh, fuel here, this dense cold fuel, um, because it's just the way it works out in order to create these sort of 5 keV temperatures. Um, so you, it's quite inefficient. And it's also because you have to have a high velocity implosion in order to create the high kinetic energies. It's susceptible to hydro instability, such as the Rally Taylor stability. So um, higher gain inertial fusion concepts have been um, discussed uh, or you know, proposed, that which Tony talked about before. So we have one idea which has received a lot of attention is this uh, fast ignition approach, which Tony talked about before. We have reduced compression, so 200 grams per cc, and then you have a high-intensity laser, which impinges on, well, often on a cone-type design and accelerates electrons, MeV electrons, which then stop collisionally within the fuel. And this has the potential for higher gain. Um, the critical factors in energetic feasibility of fast ignition is you have to have good laser absorption of the order of about 50%. You have to have fast uh, electron diversion has to be low. Experiments have shown that this is, the fast electron beams tend to be very divergent. And then you have to have the correct energy spectrum in order for the electrons to stop within the, um, within the fuel. And to a certain extent, this is a function of one and two. So it's, it looks sort of okay-ish, but a bit unclear at the moment. Um, so there have been various. So the reason that the um, the fast electron diverged matters is essentially because you have a, an offset between where the laser gets absorbed and the region you're trying to heat. So if these electrons diverge, you transfer laser energy very inefficiently from here to the the fuel you're trying to heat, and you end up needing huge ignition laser energy. Um, so various schemes have been proposed to try and steer these divergent. Um, fast electron beams, the magnetic switchyard scheme of Robinson et al. Um, Holger Schmidt, who's also in our group at RAL, has proposed this uh, magnetic mirror scheme. Um, and then an idea that was proposed by Robinson basically has two laser pulses. So the first laser pulse generates the magnetic field, an azimuthal magnetic field, which then collimates the uh, fast electrons from the second beam. And I also did some experimental work in my PhD, which seems to show that this seems to work experimentally. Um, so what I'm going to talk about here is a, rather than a way of taking this divergent beam and making it less divergent, it's a way of creating a, uh, a convergent beam at source. 
So if we just take the Lorentz force equation, so we have E is the electric field vector. I actually realized when I was thinking about uh, the presentation that it was actually Zolf who taught me this when I did my PhD. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so the, the so if you have a, a laser it's incident in the, along the Z axis, um, it accelerates, the electric field accelerates uh, the electrons in the Y direction, and when they start to get an appreciable factor of, uh, fraction of C, you get this V cross P push. So you have the uh, electric field, and then you, every, twice every cycle you have this inward, this push in towards the target. And um, so what you find is that um, as A naught, this factor A naught, which various other people have already explained, when it gets above about two, um, which is about this sort of intensity, um, the electrons are accelerated twice into the target every laser cycle, and that the, dire the direction approaches the laser's pointing vector more and more as you get to higher intensity. So the basic idea of the scheme, so if we've got this cone here, is that you have a focusing laser which naturally have a, has a curved phase front. And if you then match that uh, curved phase front with a uh, convex cone tip, um, that, that's the, the basic idea of this, okay? I explain why it should work in the, the subsequent slides. I'm just sort of displaying the geometry there. So this is um, actually extracted from a PIC simulation. So you have your, uh, your lasers incident with this curved phase front. This is the front of the target, which is this matching curvature. So if you have electrons which are accelerated by the electric field, um, They'll be accelerated along the target surface. Wherever they reach um, C or an appreciable um, factor of C, such that they get a significant uh, J cross B or V cross B push, wherever they are on that surface, the, the normal direction to the electric field will always be um, perpendicular to well, the electric field and by construction to the target surface. So if, the elect if an electron happens to reach C, uh, or nearly C, here it will be accelerated in this direction. If on the next cycle of the laser it reaches C here, it will be accelerated in that direction. And or if it happens to reach C in the center of the target, it will be accelerated in this direction. You can see that all these points point to a uh, location within the target, which is dictated by, well, by both the curvature of the laser phase front and this front surface. So in principle, you can focus a beam some point within the target. So in order to test this out, we can do uh, PIC simulations. Uh, so this, this sort of details the PIC simulations. Um, so one way of uh, looking at this is if you take that target front surface, and basically bin, take a small region and bin those electrons, and then you can look at what those electrons, how they're emitted from where the laser gets absorbed. You can see from each of these localized regions where I've uh, been the electrons, you have a beam which points in the direction normal to the target front surface. It has a small divergence around about that, um, you know, around about the normal vector, and it's the same, you know, at each location within the target. And if you sort of summarize that and subtract the normal vector, you see that overall you have this beam which is relatively modest divergence. Um, and uh, yeah, so it seems to work quite well. And, and this just shows that in a slightly less clear way, probably. Um, so we can also uh, look at a, a movie of the PIC simulation. So you basically have the, the laser is incident from the uh, left in this way. And what you'll see is um, various phase fronts of electrons, fronts of electrons which are created here and they propagate inwards and uh, down to a point around about here. And then obviously they diverge having, having focused. So uh, yeah, it proceeds on. The electrons do focus down reasonably well. I mean, there's obviously some scattering, but it does seem to work reasonably well. This simulation has iron motion off, so it's a fairly iron idealized simulation, but you can see it works reasonably well. And then we can do likewise with iron motion on. And basically you see fairly similar sort of thing. 
a little bit more uh, variance, but it um, seems to work quite well. So, um, so what this offers is the possibility of, a, you know, of if you can do this over larger spatial scales, actually create a convergent beam. So you, so you maintain very high energy density and, and the region of the fuel that you want to heat far deeper into the target. Do a similar sort of thing there. Okay, I will skip that. Uh, one of the critical things which could sort of make the scheme work less well is deformation of the critical surface um, at this point at the cone tip. You see after a, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Button. You can see that after 150 femtoseconds, there's very little deformation. There's a little bit more after 300 femtoseconds, but generally this looks good. These are very expensive six simulations, so um, I haven't been able to go much further than that. Um, uh, so the conclusion just I wouldn't say these are quite conclusions, but the conclusions so, so far is that we do seem to be able to create this sort of nice focusing uh, fast electron beam for at least a couple of hundred peak, uh, femtoseconds. And the nice thing about this is that the convergent geometry actually opens the design space, which is possible with um, fast ignition, because what you can do is you, because it's a focusing beam, you can increase the laser solid interaction area. And in doing so, even if the scheme doesn't last for very long time scales, which I wouldn't anticipate it would do, because you will eventually get deformation of the front surface, you can actually decrease the pulse length uh, significantly and thereby opening up the uh, design space. Um, so future work, we've had problems. This has been done with the Epoch code. And we've had problems with the collision routines. Um, so these have been fixed theoretically, and we are currently uh, evaluating them to check that everything's behaving correctly. But we don't anticipate, it shouldn't be, uh, collisions shouldn't be a problem in terms of deflecting it because, um, well, until you get to the very dense fuel, because the mean free path of one MeV electron is a long way in a sort of solid material. Um, so in terms of scope for collaboration, um, I would like to sort of evaluate the robustness of the scheme for more realistic uh, scenarios, because what I've done so far has been a fairly idealized simulations. Um, and if anyone was interested in doing, you know, taking my input decks and doing more realistic simulations with, you know, less idealized, that would be uh, a, nice bit, a nice way of collaborating. Ideally, the collaborator would have access to significant computational resources, but this may be available through, uh, through the collaboration. And also, if anyone wants, was interested in doing experimental validation of the scheme, that would be great. And uh, that's my lot. Thank you very much. Right. Some questions. Uh... Why were there no instabilities in this? What's that? Instabilities, viable instabilities and other instabilities. Um, well, so this, the, um, well, I mean, we have, so I have done collisional pick simulations, okay? But, and in that you did see viable like uh, instabilities, okay? But then the problem is that the, the, the collisional simulations I've done to date, there was significant issues with the collision algorithms. So I don't know the extent to which those, um, the viable type uh, instabilities I saw um, you know how real that was, because because there was problems with the codes. We need that's the sort of next stages to go back and look at it. But certainly from the uh, collision lit, uh, we don't see it see any significant potential. Probably if you went for longer time scales, but this, these have only gone up to sort of 300 femtoseconds. If you went for longer time scales, I'm sure it would appear. Well. <laughs> What's that? Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. Um, I mean, I can go back and look in more detail, but um, it doesn't seem to be a significant issue so far. I mean, these are very dense plasmas. I mean, it's solid density.
bro. Mm -hmm. I, so I was wondering, with your, uh, with the curved front on it, how much more energy do you get deposited at the focus than if you just had a flat front? Um, well, I mean, the, the real gains come if you start to, um, you know, it, it depends on the, on the specific geometry that you're looking at, but the real gains come if you start to go to larger um, surface areas with more convergent type geometries. But basically, if you look, say, at the t intensity of the electron beam, that is, you know, relatively deep within the target, say 30 microns within the target with these simulations, the intensity of that electron beam will pretty much match the, or maybe within the fact of two of the incident laser beams. So whereas, you know, normally with a divergent um, electron beam, you know, you'd be many times lower in terms of the intensity. So that gives you, you can integrate that intensity over whatever blob size you uh, are interested in. Uh, hi. Uh, typically, uh, here. So typically, you would expect a large amount of pre plasma in the cone. Mm -hmm. For example, simulations of uh, Laurent Duval show that then instead of the laser going all the way to the critical surface where you expect this J cross B guiding, mm -hmm. uh, it's basically sprays all over. So have you investigated the role of large scale pre plasma uh, and how it would be detrimental to your scheme? Yeah, I mean, in these simulations, I've got uh, pretty, fairly modest uh, pre-plasmas. Um, uh, I think it's almost certainly true that if you were to have very large-scale pre-plasma, it probably would make this scheme not work. But at the same time, there are numerous laser systems around the world that now have extremely high contrast, you know, like 10 to the 14 and things like this. So whether or not that can be... Uh, achieved on the very high energy laser systems that you would require for fast ignition. I don't know. I'm not a laser designer, but certainly it's possible on sort of you know a few hundred joule systems. Um, but yeah, you're right. If you had large density scale lengths, it wouldn't work. Yeah, there's this issue of uh, jets coming from the compression of the background because when you yeah. so in I mean even without uh, your if you're Thickness is not able to sustain that kind of a pressure from mm. the backside. You would expect. Uh... I think I think people at Livermore have done some implosion work um, that has managed to sort of get around that issue. You meaning from the implosion, you get jets that come back up the cone. I think they've managed to come up with hydro designs that get around that. Um, so hopefully that you know wouldn't be an issue. But likewise, you know, if you did have a jet which came out and destroyed your front surface, it wouldn't work. Um, Thank you. Um, this might be more a question for Professor Cork to answer rather than Robbie, I don't know. But even in the case that beams were wibble and stable, I think it would be quite interesting to see um, in a convergent geometry what would happen to those beams. I don't know if anybody's ever studied wibble in a convergent geometry before. I mean, I suppose the major, maybe the major danger. I mean, it would depend. What I would think, if you had, did have significant wibble, you might get, you know, very large magnetic fields, which then may scatter the electrons, uh, which might be an issue. But then, likewise, if you did have this convergent geometry, you might have a good chance of seeing this sort of collimation that Tony talks about, because you know you have very high beam. Okay, um, any more questions? Right. If not, we'd like to thank uh, Robbie again. I'd like to thank all the speakers this morning.